The name of this tutorial is Ira Krakow's Python 3 Tutorial Part 5, List Methods. In Part 4, we saw how to use slicing to work with parts of a string, list, or tuple, as well as how to insert, delete, and add to these types of variables. Python has a number of built-in methods. They're also called functions that can do these operations in a way that makes the code easier to read. Sometimes it's a bit hard to understand all those colons and square brackets, and it's easy to use words like append, remove, or insert, which are indeed the names of methods associated with lists. We'll also see how these easy-to-understand methods can be used to build a simple stack where the last element added is the first element retrieved, or a queue where the first element added is the first element retrieved. We'll also discover how to sort, count, and locate items on a list. Along the way, we'll learn about the autocomplete feature of Blender's Python console, a handy feature that documents available methods. We'll be working in the Python 3 console window again, so start with Blender 2.5. We'll be using the Python console for the most current version, Alpha 2. Go to the scripting setup, position the cursor in the Python console window at the lower left corner, and press Control down arrow to maximize the window. First off, what is a method anyway? In Python, a list is actually an object. Depending on the type of object, Python defines methods, which are actions that can be done with the object. The Python console's autocomplete feature displays a list of what can be done with a particular type of object. Let's start with a string object. So enter s equals quote happy blendering close quote, which is a string. Then type s dot and press the autocomplete button. You get a list of different things you can do with the string s. Let's use the capitalize method to capitalize the first letter of the string. Enter capitalize, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, and press enter, and you get happy blendering with the h capitalized. Sometimes a method produces a true-false result, like you're asking the string a question. For example, a numeric string is a string that consists of numbers. Right now, it does not have that quality. So entering s dot is numeric, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, produces the answer false. However, assigning a numeric value to a string and asking it if it's numeric will produce a true result. So s equals single quote and enter some numbers, close the quote, and then s dot, and you'll see a different list of methods because the methods are specific to strings. So we'll type s dot is numeric, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, and the answer is true. Now let's redefine s to be a list instead of a string. So let's enter the list Mary had a lamb and assign it to s. And then we'll enter s dot and we'll get another list, append, count, extend, index, insert, and so on. It's an entirely different set of methods that are specific where lists. Methods are functions that can be done depending on the type of the data. So let's look at these list specific methods in more detail. The append method has a string argument. What you put in parenthesis will add to the end of the list. Thus, s dot append left parenthesis quote, and, quote, right parenthesis, adds the word and to Mary had a lamb. Append adds just one item to the list. If you want to add more than one item, instead of using multiple append statements, you can use the extend method, which extends the list with another list. Here's an example. So we'll do s dot extend, left parenthesis, and we'll enter the list of a and dog and close the square bracket and then uh, write parenthesis and you'll get Mary had a lamb and a dog. Notice how extend requires a list argument while append requires a string argument. Insert inserts an item at a given position or index. Remember we start counting from zero. If we wanted to insert the word large in front of the word dog, the seventh word, we would enter a dot insert six comma large and we'll get Mary had a lamb and a large dog. 
To remove the item from a list, use remove, specifying the value of the item to be removed. So to remove the word large, the entry we just entered, enter s.remove, left parenthesis, single quote, large, single quote, right parenthesis. And we're back to Mary had a lamb and a dog. The pop method with no arguments returns the last item in the list and deletes it from the list. So t equals s dot pop, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, assigns the value dog to t, and removes dog from the list. So now you have Mary had a lamb and a. To implement a last in first out stack, add the stack values with a pen and remove them from the stack with pop. If you want a last in first out queue, use pop zero instead of pop, and the first element will be removed. Pop can take an argument, which is the index of the value of pop. So do s equals pop parenthesis four, you get the word and, and is removed from the list. So the list is Mary had a lamb a. So the fifth word was removed. The index method returns the index number of the first occurrence of the string. Suppose we wanted to find the string lamb in the list s, delete it from s, and assign it to t. You could do it this way. t equals s dot pop parenthesis s dot index parenthesis quote lamb quote right parenthesis right parenthesis. So t is assigned the value lamb and what's left of s is Mary had a a. The count method returns the number of times a particular value occurs in the list. So s dot count left parenthesis, quote, a, quote, right parenthesis, will give you two because there's two a's in the uh, list. The sort method does what it says, sorting the list from lowest to highest value. Thus, s dot sort, left parenthesis, right parenthesis, gives you a, a, had, Mary. And the reverse method sorts the list from highest to lowest value. Thus, s dot reverse would be Mary, had, a, a. To summarize, we've been introduced to the autocomplete feature, which shows the methods available for particular object types. We explored the methods available for the list object. And in the process, we've seen how to implement a stack, last in, first out, and a queue, first in, first out. If you like this tutorial, please hit the YouTube subscribe button and discuss this tutorial at forum.iracrackow.com. Happy Python blendering!